So I'm going to make another segmented turning. It involves paduke and maple and maybe mahogany for the base. It involves a lot of cutting of strips similar to this. Let's start cutting these and I'll come back when they're all cut and I'll show you how we cut the segments and make rings out of them. Okay, I'll show you the process of building these rings. I'll take each segment and I'll go over the edges on a piece of sandpaper. It knocks off any of the fuzzies that are on there. Then I pre-fit them all together, a dry fit. Make sure that it all looks good. Nice tight joints. This came off the wedgie sled just the way it is. Then I will unclamp them. Keep them in this order. And then I start to glue each joint. Being end grain like this and the time that it takes me to get around with 24 segments, I'll put glue on both sides. The glue will soak into end grain very fast, so by having it on both sides, it assures me I will have a good glue joint in the end. If this was flat grain, I may not necessarily do it this way. All right, just going to show you gluing this one up because there's a lot of them. And there are more steps to do to these rings before we even get to gluing everything together. I'm over at the bandsaw now and I'm taking these rings and I will slice them into three equal thicknesses, 200 thousandths each. They're hot glued to a piece of plywood that's attached to my bandsaw sled. The sled slides this way, but it also slides in and out like that. There's a ball bearing stop here. I have it adjusted to cut 200 thousandths. I'll just bring this up there, put a little pressure on it, clamp it down with a wing nut, and then we'll cut it. If you're interested in this sled, I don't have a video of making it, but I have a video to show all the components, and that should be all you need to make one. When I slice these, it's a 14 tooth blade. You cut really slow and most of the time I don't have to sand the joints. So I'll go ahead and cut one ring, but I'm not going to show you cutting all 12 rings into smaller pieces. So this was a hook tooth bandsaw blade and it was actually 12 teeth. Also the rings came out at 210 thousandths. I've got all the discs re-sliced using my bandsaw sled. Now they need to be glued onto that piece of mahogany in my chuck, which is going to be the base. I built this Longworth chuck for locating and gluing segments. I made some real short buttons just so there was no interference as I stacked them into place. As soon as I have three or four rings glued together at the lathe, I move it over to my glue press and clamp it down real tight. I have nine of the rings glued on here now, the ones that are down to 200 thousandths. Before I glue any more, I'm just going to put the inside shape on it because it'll be easier to do it in steps.
All right, I think that's probably plenty good. So I'll go ahead and get more rings glued on and we'll do the same thing. All those rings on the bottom are glued together. There's a, about a four inch ring sitting on that clamping disc that I have. It's not glued to anything, of course. And then there's three smaller diameter rings that are being clamped right now, but they're not being glued together. Almost there. Hopefully tomorrow I can start turning on it. While the bottom section is in my glue press, I'm now gluing up the upper section. I will then flip this around and turn the inside shape of that because I will not be able to reach that area through the small opening. Okay, got it. I have a shape on the inside of the bottom and the inside of the top, so now it's time to glue the two halves together. I also sanded and sealed the inside of both halves. Well, the time has come to start shaping it. I still have these three rings to glue on. I don't want to do it until I get some of this shape. That way I can still reach in and caliper the wall thickness. I'm going to continue to use that tail stock support for as long as I can. We're about a thousand RPMs. I got a freshly sharpened swept back gouge. Okay, I think that's about what we need. Two more segmented rings to glue on, but we're still not done. Two more rings to blend in with the rest of this, and we'll have that outside shape all done and ready to sand. I'm going to use my half inch full gouge at a thousand RPMs. I wasn't going to put a cap on this, but I really think I'm going to like it better with it. Now the question is whether I take this top row off and do it. Either way I'll be back and I'll have a piece of mahogany glued on here. I debated taking that segmented ring off the top just because I wasn't sure I had enough material to blend it. But there was just enough. With the neck area less than 3 8 and sticking out almost 7 inches, I decided to use the steady rest. It makes it turn a lot better. All set up and ready to sand. It's actually very smooth, so I will start with 120 using sheets, work my way up to 500, and the reason I want to use sheets here is to help maintain the contour. But before we get sanding, I need to turn my heater back on. It is really cold.
I'm sure you realize that loud noise was not my heater, it's the dust collector. Well, I'm ready to spray some lacquer on it. I've sanded it to 500 and I've blown it down. Normally I would try to wipe it down with denatured alcohol, but I've had a lot of problem with it making a paduk bleed into the wood next to it. And when it's maple, it turns the maple yellow looking. And I do not want to do that. So what I'll do is try some dustings of lacquer on it to try to lock the colors in before I put it on a little heavier. I'm using Deft Lacquer. I like this. I'm not connected with them, but I've been using Deft Lacquer since 1962. Long before they had spray. So let's see if we can get through this. Otherwise I'll be re-sanding it all over again. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do for now. And I'll do a couple more of these, sand it, and hopefully when I come back we'll actually be able to build up a layer. So I'll see you shortly. I sprayed this about three times just dusting over the surface and it seemed to have sealed that paduk up. It looks pretty nice. And then I put two heavier coats on and I used uh, scotch Bride in between each coat and I think I have maybe three good coats on it. I went over and wet and dry sanded it. It's 41 degrees outside right now. I've been running my heater for quite some time and prior to putting any more on I've been rubbing this paper towel over there to try to heat the wood up just a little bit more and I've already done that. And so now we're going to put a nice coat on and hope that it doesn't run. Alright, I think that's going to do it. I'm probably going to do this two or three more times. But it'll look just like what I've done. Scotch brighting in between each coat. Maybe wet and dry sanding. When I come back, I'll do the final treatment to this and I'll show you how I'm doing that. Well, it's been a week since I sprayed the last coat of lacquer on this. I will say that I sprayed between 12 and 15. That's as close as I can guess on it. I really don't count how many times I do it. I just look for when I have a finish that I'm happy with. I am happy with using real light coats on it to begin with to keep it from bleeding because I tested a piece of this and not even touching it but just spraying it too wet the paduk would bleed right across into the maple. So I'm real happy with that. Now, I said I'll have one final thing I'm going to do to it, and that's polish it out with Axe Abrasive Paste. Take a nice fresh paper towel. I did go over it with uh, Scotch-Brite prior to what I'm doing here. I think that's enough. We'll start in reverse at about 500 RPMs. Look at that. Feels really nice. 
Time for the polishing restoring paste. You'll notice that I brought my tailstock up, put a paper towel around the cone. This being so small in diameter, I need to run it a little faster to get a nice polish and apply a little pressure. I want that support. I meant to mention the reason that I wanted that extra support is the chuck is mounted in a somewhat shallow recess in that piece of mahogany which is not really the strongest wood I could have used but it is the prettiest and when using the polishing restoring paste you need to create quite a bit of friction to heat the waxes up and pressing against the neck area without any support would create a lot of leverage against that recess and I sure didn't want to take any chances. Well here it is and I am really happy with how it turned out. It's seven and three quarter inches tall, seven inches in diameter, it's two and three quarters at the top and it necks down to one and seven eighths and the walls are three eighths of an inch. Each segmented row has 24 segments in it. There's 8 Hadouk and 16 Maple. And the base and the top rim is made out of a beautiful piece of mahogany. And this is what the base looks like. And I didn't want to turn the recess away, so I made an insert out of maple and I engraved the Papa 1947 on it. That's actually handwritten and I programmed my writing and milled it in with a real small ball nose cutter and then I used an ink pen for the rest of it. Finished with multiple coats of sprayed on death lacquer. I'll go ahead and say there was 15 coats because I'm pretty sure there was at least that. Then I finished it with axe abrasive paste and polishing paste and I have to be careful hanging on to this. It's as slick as a piece of glass. This is something I've been planning on making for over a year and I'm very happy with how it came out. I also mentioned I'd be willing to share these dimensions if anyone wants to try this. It'll be on a much easier scale and uh, if you are interested just let me know in the comments and I can get those to you. I like sharing what I do for others to enjoy. I do all of this just for fun. But it would be great if you could share this video and my other videos on social media. I would really like to have this shown around. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. And for those of you who are, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Leave a comment. I read them all. And if you can share this video, it really helps the channel grow and inspires me to make even more videos. I do natural turning from logs and segmented turnings. I enjoy doing both. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.